You know, when we started Prime Man, we were pre we were having a baby. My wife was quitting her job. So then the second time when we started the retail store, it was like, you know what? We're gonna have another baby. We're gonna have a pandemic, and we're gonna open a retail store <laughs> and quit my job. <laughs> so you know. It's just... This is Ruckus Makers, a show about entrepreneurs where the mission matters and the status quo isn't an option. I'm your host, Zach Reinert, and in today's episode, we are talking with Corey Paulson about his outdoor apparel company that is taking Idaho by storm and what it means to be made for more. We are a local um, t-shirt shop and apparel and, and quality goods. You know, we're kind of always expanding into other things, but um, one of the cool things about Prime Man is we actually hand draw every logo and uh, not me, my stick figures wouldn't make the shirts, but someday maybe I'll throw one of those on there. But um, my wife is actually the artist, and so she does an awesome job. And then we hand print everything. Um, we were Idaho kids. Both of us grew up in Idaho. And uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a fun little, I don't know, I love it actually. And I love getting to be a part of the community and I love vision. I, I'm a vision guy, and then kind of how do you make vision happen? And and yeah. when people ask you what are you going to do with an art degree, you got to have some vision. <laughs> so, you, so you have an art degree? I didn't realize that. Not not me, Kenji. Oh, Kenji, Kenji has an art degree, and so when we were in college sitting at Java um, talking about it, when people would go, "What are you going to do with that?" and she would answer, um, "I have no idea. I just feel called to do it." Actually, that's kind of where Prime Man, maybe the actual idea of the store and everything started because we were sitting there and she was a little discouraged because so many people were asking her that. And, uh, and as her friend, we weren't even dating at the time, I, uh, I said, you know, you should make me a really cool hand-drawn t-shirt and um, kind of grew into, she ended up dreaming up and drawing a picture of a store. And it was her outdoorsy, cool t-shirt store that she drew all the t-shirts for. And we had had this big, long conversation about that at Java. And then she drew a picture of what it could look like. And so it's kind of fun because Prime Man definitely started yeah. in college. So, yeah. Interesting. Okay, what year was that? Oh, man, that's a good question. Let's see. Probably... Probably that was in 09, I would 09. think, okay. is the, the seed was okay. planted. And, and you met Kenji, which is your wife, does mm -hmm. a lot of the art. How did you meet her? Uh, well, playing Ultimate Frisbee. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Yeah, some intramural Ultimate Frisbee. We are hanging out, and uh, we were just friends. And so okay. it was a cool deal. We, we kind of got into the same group of friends and and. I don't know. It was just exciting and fun and new and a bunch of cool friends. Yeah. Yeah. And what were you doing for work at in 09? You said you're going to college. Were you working at the time? Yeah. Well? I worked at the Boys and Girls Club during the school year. And in the summer, I think that summer, I worked for Idaho Transportation Department. There so you go. Fun, for the fun. Government. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mowed rest areas. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Okay. Yeah. It was actually a great job because I, I got onto a big podcast kick. Because podcasts were like really kind of new. Yeah. And I would drive like four hours of my day was driving to all these rest areas and then mowing the lawns. Yeah. And so it was kind of a good gig, actually. So I loved it. Yeah. I, uh, uh, funny, around that time as well, I started listening to podcasts. Mm -hmm. I remember talking to friends being like, hey, have you, have you listened to something like this? And, and not a lot of people were listening to them. And, and nowadays, they're kind of everywhere. Yeah, I'm, really I'm fairly certain I was downloading them onto my iPod yeah. and then listening to them. There you <laughs> so, go. There you go. It was a different world. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So uh, you met Kenji. You were friends at the time, drinking mm -hmm. lots of coffee at Java. I always <laughs> see you at Java. So, uh, Still you, happening. Gotta, yeah, Love those they're, guys. <laughs> they're, they're good and, and uh, drink a lot of coffee, yeah. which, is, which is great. So how did things progress? So you were just friends, and, and how did she move forward in the art side of things? And drawing that store. 
Yeah, you know, she was really talented. I actually think the store thing was for a project for a class. So she had to make up a business. And because we had kind of had that coffee talk, she that's what she made for her business in one of her college classes. And I thought that was such a cool idea. And she always said it was her outdoorsy um, shop. And I always just wanted to be an encourager and cheer her on with that. And then Kenji's heart, um, you know, as, as you kind of, get through school and figure it out you don't know right away right and so mm -hmm. part of our heart is like what like what do you do in life to like not just um work <laughs> like we don't want to live to work we want to work to live and like what's our purpose and and we always wanted our purpose to be more than just like a nine to five and and it can be simple things even like Ken, one of her dreams was like i want to be a stay-at-home mom partially like, I want that to be a part of my heart because her mom was such an awesome mom to her. And uh, she wanted to be that for our kiddos someday. And so art actually, even though it's the same thing that everybody said, what would you do with an art degree? It's become the way she gets to be a stay-at-home mom, which is kind of special for us. And then, uh, you know, hard work outdoes talent. And you I will say Kenji has both of those. So that's kind of special and, and I'm so proud of her. And I think what she needed from me was maybe to like, like speak vision and then help go, okay, how do we make this happen? But it didn't just happen right after college. We actually like moved away for three years and we worked in Alaska because <laughs> we needed a little adventure in life. And we sure. had just gotten married and in our first year of marriage, we went up there and we worked for a whale watching company and then kind of expanded into like all kinds of tours and helicopter tours. And so what'd you do for the whale watching company? We were like, I don't even know what the real job title really was, but we were like, we were tour like brokers. Okay. So in Juneau, Alaska, <laughs> this is crazy, right? Yeah, you didn't know I, we were going to talk Alaska. about this. Wow. Yeah. So in Juneau, Alaska, they, uh, they have cruise ships come in every day in a normal year. And uh, these cruise ships, like, they bring in, like, I don't know, 1,500 to 4,500 people per ship. And, like, on Tuesdays, there's six ships. So there's a lot of people doing tours yeah. every day. And so we did that for a couple of years. It was an awesome, like, summer gig that we did for a few years. But that whole time, Kendra was, like, dreaming up, like, what what if we like started our own business someday and i was dreaming it up too for sure but yeah. you know kind of different yeah. seasons i think that's kind of interesting throughout your story is um she had this basis of of creativity and art right and and you know uh, i see you kind of in the store a lot and and would you say you're more of an entrepreneur or is she an entrepreneur she's more art she's the artist so she loves to draw but here's what Kenja is so good at. She is willing to trust and say yes. And so when we'd have an idea, like it wouldn't matter if I had like a craziest idea ever, like let's go to Alaska. She says, yeah, I trust you. Let's do it. And so it's fun because I think I'll probably be more, I'm more the entrepreneur, but then I'll pitch an idea and then I'll get cold feet a little bit. <laughs> And she's like, no, we're doing this. Yeah. yeah, it's a fun idea. And so we're like a good team because I like, I enjoy vision and the business side and, and all of that where she is like, she gets to be the artist. And I know it's hard for couples to work together sometimes and that's totally fine, but she is like, she's so great to work with. Like I actually love with working with her. There's some things you have to establish if you're gonna do that. Yeah. Like <laughs> you have to be correctable and it can't yeah. be personal, sure. which that's a hard thing to sure. learn in life, right? Like yeah. I, as a 20 year old was definitely not very correctable person. And so we talk about in our crew at Prime Man, we talk about there's beauty and humble confidence. So be okay. humble and be confident. And I don't think people put those words together very often, Yeah. but we kind of try and push that as part of our culture. Yeah. And, and so, yeah. Well, confidence can be um, viewed as prideful a lot of times. And, and I think yeah. the difference to your point is being able to be teachable and be correctable because yeah. you can be confident and teachable at the same time. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. You, you keep using the word vision a lot. Uh, yeah. 
I love vision, but w- what is Corey Paulson's definition of vision? What does that mean to you? And what does that look like? You know, oh man, that's a big question. So my definition of vision, like on my wall in the back, it says like made for more. Okay. And the reason it says that is because like, I believe that about everybody. Like, I don't want to settle. And so part of my heart is like, how do you get people to flourish? And I think that's a big part of vision for me. So like, how do I, as a husband, how do I honor my wife? And how do I get her into a place where she flourishes in her art? And so, I mean, Prime Man started on a napkin, right? Like, let's just, like, seriously. That's like, it's not just like the cliche story. Like, we literally, like, started some of those drawings on a napkin. And then I love when people are in their wheelhouse. Like, and I think it's hard to get people there. And I think it's hard to get me there. Like, I'm in my own way sometimes. Yeah. Um, so for me, vision is about how do we get people into that place of flourishing? And even our customers, like, I want them to flourish. And, and I, love, I, I love this part right. for sure. That's part of my, like, oh, I like talking to people. I enjoy it. And sometimes I don't even know what to say or I feel whatever. But I enjoy it. And I want yeah. people to know, like, you know, even our first core value, our first core value, okay, Prime Man, is kindness. And people are like, wait, that's your first business core value. And there's some people who have spoken into my life about this. And, and uh, they're really brilliant business people because I want to get wisdom, okay, because I don't have it all. So I've really asked a lot of questions and tried to learn a lot. But my first core value at Prime Man is kindness. And I tell customers even this. And I say, like, hey, it's not because you're always right, because you're not. Um, but it's because you're always valuable. And I want to treat you like you're valuable. And I believe you have value. And then also, every workplace has drama. So if kindness can be one of our core values, um, like all of our crew has permission to be like, hey, Corey, kindness. Between me and them, between them and each other. Like everybody has permission to remind each other of kindness because it's one of our culture core values. And, uh, And then the last one's like to yourself. Like who's your worst critic? Um, And I found myself like, you know, you mess up a couple shirts while you're printing on that manual screen printing press setup. And uh, it's funny that a couple shirts can like ruin your day if you're not careful. Oh man, I think we all do it though, right? Like, like you can just be so frustrated. And I was like, okay, we got to stop doing that. (laughs) Like, own it, fix it, and move on. <laughs> like, stop being so critical. And I don't know. I, I don't, like, everybody has their theories of why maybe we're like that a little bit. Maybe social media, we always look at somebody's highlight reel. Yeah. And so we're critical of ourselves. And we go, oh, if only I had that story or, or that or whatever. But I actually think sometimes it's as simple as being like, it's all good. Like, I can be kind to myself even when I mess up. And yeah. so, yeah, one of the one of the definitions of kindness that uh, uh, Craig Grishel says this mm-hmm. and, and kind of Dave Ramsey says this as well. But he says to be clear is to be kind. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you agree with that? Because that doesn't say be nice. You mm-hmm. know, it says bring clarity into that. Yeah. I mean, I I think there's probably lots of pieces of it. I, I think those guys are wise guys. I I listen to Craig Groeschel's leadership podcast sometimes. So yeah. that's cool yeah. that you bring him up. But I didn't even yeah know you're going to bring that up. But yeah. anyways, he he does a great job at thinking deeply about it, but making it simple. And yeah. and so I think with his role in life, he that makes a lot of sense to me that he would see that. For me, I... I think it's for me partly like, and that this may be something I need to clarify. Maybe I need to be more clear, but I would say it's more for me like, I don't even want it to just be like treat others like you want to be treated. I want it to be like, like honor others like above yourself. Yeah, treat and like better serve. Than you would treat, yeah. yeah. And so if I can be doing that, and even like somebody needs a day off, it's like, hey, ask like let's let's even if it's a bad timing like literally somebody just called me on my walk over here it's like hey uh can I take Friday and I was like well this person's already taking it off and and then 
that are like, oh man, I really could use it. And it's like, okay, I just ask them like, so how can we make it work? Like, like how can we make it work if you need Friday? And sometimes, like, obviously I could just be like, no. Right. <laughs> but in my heart, that's not very kind. Like maybe <laughs> yeah. I can figure out a way. Yeah. So that's part that's of it really for cool. me. Yeah. That's really interesting. It's an attitude. Do you have more core values? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I really believe in like being, I, I almost don't like saying it, but it, it's the way I say it still, that it's like, I want us to be positive people. So um, tone sets tone. And that's just fact. Like I can yeah. show you with my three and a half year old, like, <laughs> Tone sets tone, I promise. I know you're right. I mess mine up every day. No. So I'm just like, okay, like how I say like how I say something like matters. And so I think being positive is in, is important. Um, being productive, like it's massive for us. Like you have yeah. to produce. Like if we're all, you know, and if we're all carrying something together. It doesn't matter if there's five of us or 10 of us or whatever. Like, and it, I'm not even saying everybody carries the same weight. Like, that's not real life. Like, not everybody carries the same weight. But everybody has to carry weight. Like, yeah. we all have to produce. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And, and we want it to work well. And we want – the other one is, like, excellence. And, okay. and so I, I want to do things with excellence. Like, I don't want to sell people shirts that we mess up. Yeah. Like even people want us to do a bargain bin sometimes. And I'm like, I, I'm wrestle with that. <laughs> Cause I'm like off brand. I don't want to do value, that, yeah. but I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's good still. Like I also like getting a good deal. So, you know, you sometimes go. it's good to get a good deal if you can balance it. Right. But yeah, I mean, I, I believe in excellence and that that's actually pretty much all of our core values. And then, okay. you know, I, I believe in like, pouring into each other, you know. Every Wednesday morning, our whole crew is invited to coffee, and That's we awesome. have coffee together before work starts, and the only rule is nobody's supposed to talk about work. That is awesome. <laughs> so is that like, my mind goes to team building. Are you just trying to build totally. culture and, and build relationships and invest yeah. in people? Or? Uh, I mean, I wanna, I want, I didn't, so you talked to earlier, like when we were just chatting, it's like, you talk about people see something as it blow, blew up and they think it blew up overnight 20 years later. And the truth is, is like for me, I want to build wisely and I can't do it alone. So if I can pour into people who are doing life with me, um, I really believe that that's going to be huge for our longevity, for our success for a lot of pieces of it, you know? Yeah. So we're, I'm going to, I'm going to ask a question here. I'm going to jump ahead in the timeline okay. a little bit, but That's okay. where do you see prime man in, in the future? Like you're, I can see in your eyes, you're dreaming big. What, what are those dreams? Oh, well, I can't share too much, you know, but no, I, I have ideas. I mean, I, one, I obviously, how do you continue doing something? Well, I think people will figure it out for a season and then they like forget how to continue it. Yeah. So I want to continue, like, stay the course on some level. But then on other things, like, definitely have some vision and, and other ideas. I mean, Made for More, that thing I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. I'd love to do, like, a nonprofit called that as a side company for Prime Man. And okay. it'd still be Prime Man, but, like, it's, like, a side gig where um, the coffee, like, the coffee beans that are in our shop. Actually, a friend of ours that I met speaking at a little conference – um, he went to Fiji to build some houses and he saw how impoverished Fiji was. And I always imagined Fiji as like big hotels and yeah. awesome ocean and all that. And he goes, dude, it's so third world. Like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. And he's, he, at that time didn't have the idea he has now, but he was like, I want to do something to help these people like make it because there's no jobs and they make between two and $10 a day for like a 10 or 12 oh hour day. Oh and so he had this cool, some cool people help him like a crew of people. They kept seeing all this wild coffee all over and um, they 
pay these people to pick these coffee beans and they dry them there and they ship them to Park City of all places okay. and they roast them in Park City and he pays them better than fair trade and his heart is to like restore the family unit in Fiji partly and wow. um, I love that and okay. so I've really I carry his coffee I give it away every day so yeah. we just brew it, it and serve coffee. it it's free and then you can buy his beans and and we just do it because like I believe in what he's doing like that matters and it's valuable and so I like Prime Man already gets to do some of that, but I mean, actually even one of my goals is to take our whole crew and like, I think it'd be crazy to have a sign on my door saying, hey, Prime Man's right. closed. We went to Fiji to build a couple of houses as, as best we can, not that we do all the work. We just serve a little bit and they're doing most of the work, but if you could help do some of that and just like go do things that matter. Yeah. And so that's one thing I wanna do and I have this, crazy idea that we're just going to go and close the shop for a week and have a sign on the door and everybody's going to be like they're in Fiji as a whole crew that's so I, crazy I love that idea there uh it, it's really interesting one thing at our company is we're trying to introduce rhythms of rest yes and there's a local restaurant here in Twin Falls uh that literally they put a sign on their door and they say it's family vacation we're out for two weeks see ya wow yeah and, and every time i go there and i want their food and i see that sign i'm slightly frustrated but at the same time i'm so proud of them for saying we're out thank you for being great customers we're gonna go rest yeah and uh and so i love that idea of taking your team to mm -hmm. Fiji and, and I was doing some mission work. I think that's great yeah so. yeah that's so that's some of prime man's vision is how do we how do i mean I, like it's awesome to to succeed at things and and all that but it's like what's your why you know if mm -hmm. if it's all for not like I don't know I want to I want to have yeah. a why and I yeah. I do believe God calls us to be people who like who live like that yeah and even even in the simple like yeah Fiji's like oh wow what if they did that and maybe it'll never I mean hopefully it will but in the simple version it's like hey my little boy is for he's turning four and he has a soccer game. I'm so sorry, I have nobody to cover the shop right now. Yeah. We're closed for a second. Yeah. I love my boy and I wanna support him. And like, I think that's valuable and imp yeah. important to me. And, and I, my hope is that if we can, you know, hopefully that can rub off and even in our community and our culture. And like, it's not yeah. that we don't value the people walking in, we love people walking in. But we want to even promote the idea that, like, hey, like, please come back in an hour. His game's 45 minutes, you know? Yeah, right. Like, just, we'll be right away. back, you know? Yeah. And I, I think that's a cool thing that I want to try and be committed to. It's, like, like what matters and what's our why in life. Mm -hmm. So how many hours a, work, a week do you work then? Uh, <laughs> a lot. Yeah. I mean, you put in, it depends on the week. I mean, I do have a goal, like, let's try and keep it at 50 or whatever but yeah. that's not real all the time sometimes yeah. we'll do sometimes i'll work a 40 hour week this is and people exaggerate about how many hours we work as i don't know why we do that sometimes but there's times when when shows were going big yeah because we were when prime men started in 2017 we would do like one to two shows a month. So we'd be at Boise Art in the Park or mm -hmm. Ketchum Arts Festival or Pocatello Spring Fair or McCall, you know, mm -hmm. and we're at all these events, like one a month. And those shows, you work all day for three days. So you kind of work like three 12 hour days, mm -hmm. but you also set up for four hours-ish, yeah. three to four hours and tear down for, tear down's a little faster because you're just hucking stuff just back stuff into in boxes. boxes and yeah. let's get out of here after you just worked your tail off. But it's like when you work 40 hours or 50 hours and then you go do a show and then you get back and then you work 40 hours. Do it again. It's a long week, yeah. <laughs> so sometimes you work yeah. a lot more. And that that's the thing is like, you gotta make it work and you gotta complete projects, yeah. um, but you also do have to rest. And so right. balancing that's probably a, an ongoing piece of the pie. <laughs> I, was, I was listening to a podcast today that they use the phrase intentionally out of balance. Uh -huh. and, and I thought that was so unique because it was the idea that you would go and choose to do those shows, right? Because you knew that you were sacrificing now mm -hmm. so that later you could go to that soccer game, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I think entrepreneurs uh, are beautiful that way. Like, 
Oh yeah. I think it's interesting how they can make those situations and those equations in their head and say, I'm going to sacrifice for this later. Mm -hmm. I just think that's unique. It's fun to see you do that and kind of explain that a little bit. Yeah, it's fun. And, and yeah, you like, I don't want, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it all the way, but it's like, I don't want to not work. Like, like I actually like, I really will say like, I love my job. Like I really do. And there's hard things with it. I sat with an accountant for four hours the other day and I'm like, yay, you know, (laughs) he's a really nice guy too. I really like him, but like not, not always stoked about some of that stuff, but you, you know, like you said, I mean, last night I worked late because uh, my family, like my in-law, they came down and we like, I took a couple days off at the end of last week. So then I was like, hey, I'm going to work late for like four days this week just so everybody knows. And yeah. clarity, I guess that yeah. is a kindness because good communication and clarity. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I w- had to remind Kinch yesterday, like, hey, by the way, remember, I'm working, working till late. yeah, a little there bit, a couple go. extra hours every day just to make sure we get everything done that needs to get done. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. It's always a good thing. Mm-hmm. It's always good when the leader jumps in and, and you know, does oh. something. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, let's jump back to, so Alaska, uh, what year was that? Oh man, I, so right, probably 2011, 2012 and 2013, those summers, I think. Yeah. If okay. I'm remembering right. Okay. Okay. So you moved back to Twin Falls from Alaska. What'd you do after that? We're only there five months at a time. Five months. Okay. Okay. So it's kind of crazy, but you work like, you want to talk about people who work like a lot up there. You work as many days as you can. So we would work and then you have to rest. Like you can't function for a month probably. Oh, wow. And then you kind of figure it out, but we would move back in the off season. And, uh, but it was like, I was making more money doing the Alaska thing than I was like with any jobs with my degree for a little bit there. And obviously you work into degrees and jobs and all that stuff, but it was like such a cool gig for a while. And we got to travel a little bit in the off seasons and all that. And then when we came back, we'd really been praying like, okay, I have this, and I don't even, I guess I haven't, I didn't think we were going to talk about this. Sorry. Uh, That's good anyways. But we have this thing where we would go up there and then we would just like pray about something cool to do in the off season and then kind of trying to figure out like, what are we going to do with our lives? Right. Cause as young, like just graduated, yeah. don't know what to do all the way. Um, not like a specialized degree by any means. Um, what is your degree in? Uh, liberal arts. Liberal arts. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, you have an art company, outdoors <laughs> company. Yeah, but my liberal arts has nothing to do with an art degree. Like, Kinch has commercial and fine art, two degrees of those. But, like, yeah, liberal art. Mine is kind of like I did all my gen eds. So there you go. I did, did it. I don't know. And then I was tired of it and didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. But, anyways, we, like, before we went to Alaska, we'd just really been praying, like, like, what – what do we do in this season? And and I really believe in like, like enjoying like seasons. So I try, not that I'm perfect about it, but I try not to be a person who's like, oh, if only I could get to here. I really think that that like is a bad mentality that we kind of almost teach. Um, and so I really believe in going like, like what is the like best thing I could be doing right now? And sometimes the best thing I could be doing right now is like the dishes, like true story, like love my wife by doing some dishes. And like, if I know that that's like the best thing to be doing, that's what I want to try and be doing. So I tell you that because I was like, that was my prayer graduating college. I was like, what can I be doing? And honestly, I knew what I needed then was rest because I worked all through college and I was burnt out. And I thought I was going to come back and go back to school or something. Um, and really felt like God had guided us to Alaska. And then I had this awesome job where yeah. we made good money. Right. And you work your tail off and make pretty good money up there. And then um, felt like we did really, like, flourished in our jobs. And, and it was good. And then I just, I really was sensing. And I didn't want to tell Kinji. But I was like, I don't know if we're supposed to come back next year. And this is oh, funny, yeah. okay? Because I'm like... I'm really pondering. I'm like, oh, it's, I have such a good gig. Like I get half the year off, like to do whatever I want, you know? And we're like, marriage is good. Life is good. We're like, we'd bought a house in twin. 
We actually owned a home here, but we yeah. worked up there. Okay. And uh, still the same house we live in now. <laughs> um, but anyways, we, uh, as I was like praying, I really felt like it was going to be my last year. And then she came to me like and goes, hey, I need to talk to you. And she's like, I've been praying and, and I really feel like we're supposed to go home and not come back next year. And then I, I not argued, but I reasoned with her of all the way, all the reasons why that's not a good idea. And I was like, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? And I was like, I'm feeling the same thing, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of like throwing her mixed signals. Yeah. But um, okay. and then we took the whole off season. We didn't, I, I told my boss like, hey, I might not come back. Um, but he was like, yeah, right. Like you'll, you, you're not going to find anything like this. Like this is such a good no, gig for I, you. And sounds awesome. It sounds awesome. I will say, like, when I say you work your tail off, like, on Tuesdays, I would go to work at, like, 5 or something around 5, and I would get off at, like, 8.30 at night, and I hadn't eaten yet. Oh. Like, no joke. Like, Tuesdays were the busiest day of the week. But I kid you not, like, sometimes you're just like, whoa. Like, and then you go to bed and dream about selling tours all night, and you're like, I didn't rest at all last night. <laughs> but go. anyways... So yeah, it's kind of a, a crazy, weird world up there and, and cool. But yeah, so we, we came back and then I actually called this guy, Ron Heath, and was like, hey, Ron, is there, I don't really like need a bunch of money or anything right now, but I need something to do. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you, if you guys need any help over at Lighthouse with like, like high schoolers or youth or if there's any way I could like serve. And uh, he was like, you know, it's crazy. We literally had a meeting yesterday that we keep forcing the people who come in and serve. And he he said, like, you should come in and talk with me. And then he told me when we talked, he said that, like, they'd been praying that somebody, that, like, God would bring somebody in to, like, serve in the high school okay. at Lighthouse. And so I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And what was Ron Heath's position there? Ron's one of the pastors at Lighthouse. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, so you went, did you start as a pastor there or, or were you uh, I was volunteering? Like, I was volunteering. Okay. And so I actually, it was about this time of year that we kind of, I started going to the high school youth group and uh, the guy who was doing it was transitioning out. And there, then he, he was like, not sure when. I, and this is kind of a little bit blurry because it was a crazy season of life. But anyways, pretty much what happened is I had called Ron. We had this awesome talk, and he really wanted me to come and just show up and see what I thought about it. And then that guy who was doing the youth group was like, hey, can you share? And I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and he goes, can you, can you share on Wednesday, like this week? And I, I was like, uh, sure. And it was like, my third week there or something it was pretty quick in and i okay. shared and um it was really cool and it was like this tiny little group of high schoolers that definitely like you know there's a variety of kids there sure. and it was super cool and i really felt like that was where i was supposed to be and so i just volunteered for like six months and then they offered me a paid position there and then Six months after that, they offered me like a salaried, like okay. real position there as the youth guy. And it was like an awesome five years. So that was the next five years of my life. Okay. So that was 03 to or, 08, roughly. No. Uh, thir Sorry, 13 to that's 18. That's okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, we're wrong on dates. See, I messed this up. I messed it up. So I finished my time at Lighthouse last July. Okay. So through 21. Through or through 20, through 20. So I gave a year's notice in 2019. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, interesting. So you, when you started Prime Man 2017. in 2017, so yeah. you were pastoring full-time youth kids. I was working full-time, yeah, yeah. Starting that up. Talk about that a little bit. What was that like when you first started? You know, we. this is easy because I know the timeline here. So Emmett, Kinge was pregnant, and she was like, hey, remember that thing about me wanting to be a stay-at-home mom someday? <laughs> Um, I want to quit my job and I want to start the t-shirt thing and I'm pregnant and <laughs> this is a good time to do it if we're going to do it. All at the same time? All at the same time. What a yeah. conversation. So I was like, uh, yeah. And we'd been learning how to screen print with this guy, Brandon, yeah. that is like an awesome guy who really had taught us a ton. And Ken just like, let's just make the jump. 
And then my response was like, well, that'd be awesome if we could figure out how to make it work, but it's kind of scary. And um, she, she was like, I really think we should do it. And so she was the one who like pitched, like, let's do yeah. it now. So we'd been talking about it like all that time, yeah. like from college yeah. until we actually got to that place. But when she got, when she was pregnant with Emmett, she really wanted to be able to work and do some of that from home. Okay. So we, we took a big risk and bought a bunch of equipment and different stuff. And um, for a few months, actually, I should rewind. I really encouraged her like, hey, could we, uh, could you get four awesome designs that you love and that we love? Could we work on it? And so people think you just draw a picture and maybe some people do it this way. You just draw the picture and then boom, it's good. Um, but for us, we draw a picture and then we redraw it and then we redraw it. And, you know, yeah. 25 times later, we're like, that's awesome. <laughs> and yeah. so we're actually going through that right now. You we, Prime Man just wasn't one take. Just Prime done. Man was not one take. If you saw the first Prime Man, you might laugh a little bit because um, the stick figured bridge that I drew on the guy is pretty horrid. But she made it do awesome. Do you still have that? Like, original we do. Work? We do. Oh, wow. We've actually been working on a thing to get like what do we we want to put all the originals up on the wall in the store that's awesome and so even if we like like aren't pumping that this design as much we still want it and we we, we still want to be able to print it but it's like how do you display everything all the time and we've thought it'd be cool to do like a canvas or something of every design we've ever done or just yeah. frame the original piece of paper yeah and because they're all out of our sketchbooks oh, and man. so but yeah, so Kenj drew four awesome designs and we signed up for a show. And I was like, well, I guess we're gonna know. And it it's cool. Yeah. And we like I said, like we we really believe in like communicating and praying through everything we do. And we just really felt like it was kind of like, man, I, we believe we're supposed to do this and it was a faith mm -hmm. thing. And and you kind of walk through that, through the highs and lows of it. And we went to that first show and we learned a lot. Did <laughs> we you sold out? like crazy, but here's the, here's the big thing I learned. I just I was like, I just want to sell stuff. So I'm like, what color you want? <laughs> like I did everything. So I'm like, you want a blue one of that? Yeah. Write their name down, take their money, do all the stuff. And I just like have this giant list of like specialty things. Oh, special orders. Oh my oh, no. gosh. And we sold tons of the stuff we had. Like that's why I was doing all these specialties. Cause it's like, oh, we're sold out on that. Oh yeah. We don't have any mediums in that. Oh, we don't have any extra large of that. And it was like, I felt like I was saying no to everything. Cause we like were so busy the first like day. Yeah. So by day two, I'm like, I'm printed all like, for, for three hours after the first day I like went home and printed for three hours yeah. then I had to go sleep and then like get up and go try and then we ran out of stuff and I'm like that's okay we'll make it for you yeah you want this you want this and I just said yes to everything so for like three weeks after our first show I was trying to like get everybody their products because yeah. it took me so, I like ordered in print and do all this stuff and make new inks and it yeah. like because I just said whatever and I'm like I'm in the garage mixing ink like okay that looks like purple you know like I, I feel like that's a gift that entrepreneurs have <laughs> is they look at it and they see the opportunity and they say yes without calculating the cost sometimes oh, there was, yeah and that's that's so awesome though it was fun man yeah. and I so did you, so after that, did you keep doing shows? Like, is that, is that kind of how Prime Man's sales started growing or? Yeah, that's definitely how it started growing. And so that same month I like got on and like built a website and um, then had some business cards with a website on it. And then at that show though, somebody said, hey, I'm doing this event and I love your stuff and I'd love you, for you to come to this event. It's like invite only. It's at the Sun Valley Lodge. It, I think you'd be a good fit. And it's in the winter and it's a market and there's not a lot of good winter markets. So we just said yes. And so then we went to a, another event at the lodge because I think our first show was in November of 2017. And then in December, we did another show. And then while we were at the show in December, somebody invited us to another show. Okay. And so it was kind of a weird thing where I didn't like go like, oh, what are all the best shows? 
people would be like, this, you should come to this. Or, or even a customer would be like, hey, have you ever seen this arts festival in Pocatello? And I'd be like, nope, but I'll try. Yeah. And they're kind of expensive to get into sometimes. Sure. And it was just like, you know what? Let's just see if it works. And if it doesn't work, we just won't go back, you know? And then it was like, we would go and we would sell out of a bunch of stuff. And then we would go, wow, that was a crazy busy weekend. I got to work all week. And yeah. I was like taking vacation days to do shows. Sure. Right. Because again, yeah, you're pastoring like, throughout this whole time. <laughs> yeah. So I had a rule at work, like you can only do one a month. Okay. Um, and then actually what I ended up doing is I would do the one a month and I couldn't be gone on Sunday. So I would drive back on Sunday work and then go tear go drive back to wherever the show was i'd have somebody else work with kenji like just oh, good wow. friends yeah like honestly the the truth about business is one of the truths is cool people make it work yeah and good friends make it work and so i'm literally like hey uh you want to go be in the booth with kenji for six hours while i or eight hours while i go work on sunday and uh haley who works yeah. for us was one of the people I was always calling That's and awesome. she works for us now. I was like how full circle now I she's have, down there making t-shirts. Yeah. And so she, it's kind of fun that like she's still a part of it cause I was calling her clear back then. So yeah. That's really cool. I mean like you treat people well along the way that that's my perspective, right? Like, you seem to be taking care of your people so well. Like uh, I know quite a few people that work there and, and all of them love it. They all talk about how they love what they do. Oh, and and I think when people say they love what they do versus they like what they do, that's a, that's a big deal. Yeah. So kudos to you on that one. Obviously, oh. obviously you're doing a good job. Oh, they make it easy sometimes. So I'm probably the, the hard one sometimes. So yeah. There you go. <laughs> Anyways. So uh, you have a store downtown, but you were working out of your house. I think my wife... Had, had picked up many hats and shirts <laughs> from Kenji, oh, yeah. uh, from Instagram DMs and whatnot. Yep. So how did you transition and, and honestly get the faith to move into retail? Um, well, so it's kind of like a long story a little bit, but I'd really been just like having, uh, honestly, I had this like heart for our community and I was like, man, I, I love Prime Man and how I get to meet so many people. Like, it opens the door. Like, I talk to people. I mean, you, you, people are, people live crazy lives. And, yeah. and I always just let people come to our house, like your wife and stuff. Yeah. So it's like, they're like, hey, and I would just say like, hey, if it's not weird, you're welcome to drop by the house or I'll meet you at the Kmart parking lot back then. Um, now it's D and B, yeah, which Kmart is awesome. And so, yeah, yeah. right. And, uh, but we live over there. And so I would just kind of give the option, like, if it's not weird for you, like I'm cool with you dropping by the house. And cause we printed it all in our little shop set up at our house. So it was easy for people to drop by. And, uh, anyways, yeah, I, I was working full time and I really, really was feeling this place of like, I just had this stirring, like I want to do more with Prime Man. And then I kind of backed up and was like, maybe I need to sell Prime Man. Because truthfully, I was like, maybe it's just all too much. Because I was wow, really? like working a lot. And uh, I kind of like was like, am I, what is going on? This is crazy. And uh, as, as I was pondering those questions, I was kind of like, hey, I'm willing to do my job working with the youth for like, for the rest of my life, if that's what I'm called to, like I'm willing. And I really was praying about it. And I was like, I'm going to pray about this for 30 days. And like five days in, I missed a day. And I was like, well, that was lame. I better start over. This is a big deal to me. Yeah. And I got like 10 days in and I missed a day. And I was like, oh my goodness, what's wrong with me? This matters so much. And I can't even like focus. And uh, then I really was like, maybe I need to be doing this with Kenji. Like, it's hers, too, you know? Like, what am I thinking? Like, I'm just going to make this decision. And so I started praying with her, and, and after a little bit, she was like, man, I really feel like you're going to transition to doing Prime Man full-time. The opposite. And I hadn't told her. I hadn't played my cards, but I was thinking the same thing. And so I love when we are, like, affirmed in what we're feeling the vision is. Yeah. I think it's nice when when people, like, speak some truth, even if it's scary truth to be like, okay, that gives me a little oomph to like move yeah. forward in it. And honestly, it's kind of a crazy story as it continued because that was in the spring 
and then I saw a building pop up. So I went and looked at it and they wanted just this crazy amount for that building. And I was like, oh, I can't do that, I don't think. And I was trying to figure out a way to make it work and I really just didn't seem like the right fit. And then I'm like watching the marketplace every week and looking for commercial buildings to rent. And I was looking over kind of on pole line and looking downtown and looking, I even like looked in the Linwood, like I looked all over. And uh, this, the building we're in popped up and I messaged the person like it popped up within like, like it been on there for 15 minutes or something like really short. And I messaged them, they're like, you want to go right now? And I was like, it's 8.30 at night. Is this weird, you know? And I was like, sure. And so I drove. I put. I just put Emmett to bed, and I drove downtown, and I looked at the building, and I was like, this could be cool. Is there brick behind those walls? Is there this? And I asked a bunch of questions. She's like, I don't know. We bought this like a week ago. And uh, I was like, well, I'm really interested. And she was like, well, let's have dinner next week, which is really cool That's for an owner normal. of a building. Yeah. And she's like, I want you to meet my husband and we should talk. I want to know who you are and what you want to do. She, she kind of knew us in yeah. passing, but we didn't know her well. And so, yeah, we went to dinner with them and felt really like confident about like, man, this feels good. And I originally wanted 25 feet and I ended up renting like over 100 feet. <laughs> okay. um, part of that's their vision, though, because they came and saw us at a show and they met us and they're like, you need this whole space. Yeah. take a risk and rent the whole thing. And so they even spoke life into us, like, do wow. this. Yeah. And uh, anyways, in the middle of that process, it was kind of interesting because um, we had we were like, we went and looked at the building and then I was leaving for a little vacation for two weeks. And so we were at this beach house, like that my, some people had actually like pitched in to help rent for us, which oh, was wow. really cool. That's and awesome. and uh, we're there and while we were there, and and I don't know like how much to share about this because people have different like opinions. But honestly, Kinch had this dream, and in her dream there was this sailboat that was like really pretty tied to this dock, and uh, and it was this beautiful sunny day, and she walked up with somebody and they cut the rope and the sailboat like went sailing and it was like this. She was like it was like the most beautiful moment she'd seen. And I was like, that's a cool dream. And she goes, Corey, I think that like that dream's about you. Like, I think you've been like prepared for what you're going to do. Like, like your job has been this docking place for you in life. And she's like, I believe God's like had you there. And it's been this awesome season that we get to celebrate. And now you get to like go do what you're called to do. And it was like, holy cow, that was like the craziest dream for your yeah. wife to have yeah. Yeah. and it like it's gonna make you feel good made me feel like so special you know and then that next week when we got back I called Sherry and Eric and said hey we'll rent the building and then we took 12,000 pounds to the dump out of that building and worked our butts off yeah. oh man <laughs> I'm sitting here looking at some brick wall I don't know your pain um oh man that's that is incredible yeah, it's uh, kind of special. It sounds like you have an incredible wife who believes in you. Yeah. Like the one thing I think that's really interesting about your guys' story is you couldn't have done this without the other person. Totally. Um, you know, like uh, I'm not the biggest proponent of partnerships, but yours is like uh, on a business partnership level. Like totally, yours is a must. Yeah, and it, it's it's been like. I mean, she's like my best friend. And so like, it's going, it's also something I wanted to always like, Ooh, should we do this? You know, like protect. And there's moments like definitely, but um, so thankful that we get to be like best buds and, and she, you know, we just had another little guy. So she's not in the shop as much, but she's still drawn. We have a new design that came out this week and we have a new one coming out next month and pretty exciting. And Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, a pandemic hit while we were going to open our store. Yep. That's a good time for people to come into <laughs> so, the store. Right? You know, when we started Prime Man, we were, pre- we were having a baby. My wife was quitting her job. So then the second time when we start the retail store, it was like, you know what? We're going to have another baby. We're going to have a pandemic and we're going to open a retail store <laughs> and quit my job. <laughs> so, you know, it's just kind of when you. That's so how it works. <laughs> it's uh, crazy. I, I mean, I could tell you many of those stories with us. And it's, <laughs> I, feel, I, feel, I feel God's funny that way. Yeah. I think uh, he makes it uh, to where you are required 
to put your trust in him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When it's, when it's that big thing, like you have to, mm-hmm. I think that's, that's a big deal. Uh, one question I had for you is throughout this process, what's been the hardest thing? The hardest thing. Hmm. I mean, definitely there, I mean, there's lots of pieces of a, of the puzzle. Like, I definitely don't know everything, and I don't have the answer to everything. And and I think maybe part of my gifting is I, I, I love hate the the puzzle. You know, like I love figuring it all out. And there's hard pieces with it. I, oh man, that's a good question. The hardest part is probably like, I think you have to get out of the way sometimes. And I think we want to make something work so bad sometimes in life that it's, for me, I like, I want to figure it all out, like every piece sometimes, but really like, it's like the journey. And, and I, for that used to be the hard part for me, I guess is what I should say. Like, I really wanted to know like, well, how many shirts do you take to this show? Like, do you take 20 mediums or do you take 15 or do you take, you know, and there's a, it doesn't seem like that matters that much, but like you do need to know, like you have to have a, a little bit of a guess about all that. And you're always wrong a little bit because yeah. at this show, Blackout Prime Man is like the shirt. And then at this show, Olive Prime Man is the shirt. And you're like, what? Like they're yeah. back-to-back weekends. Like sometimes you do a back-to-back shows and then you're like, what? why was this popular versus this? And I don't really always have the answer to that. So it used to be really hard for me to be like, I was like overwhelmed by like, what do we do? And I think you just have to do it. You have to yeah. go and you yeah, got to do action. it and you'll figure it out, you know, and not saying you don't need to think, but I'm just saying like, go do it and like, stop, yeah. stop getting in your way. Like I hear there's a young guy who works for me. He's a super guy. Like he's awesome. His name's Ben. He's super talented. Um, And the other day we were just chatting and he's like, man, I really wish I could do this, but this and this and this and this. And I just like really was like, hey, dude, like I get how you feel like probably more than you realize, because I felt that way with Prime Man for a lot of years before I did it. And I just want to encourage you. Do it. When is the right time? You you can stop giving yourself reasons why not to and start giving yourself reasons to just do it. And. I don't know. Now it's so different for me because even our crew's like, hey, do you want to try that? I'm like, just let's just do it, you know? And I'm a little, it's easier for me to do it now because you practice it and yeah. you learn, so. Made for More keeps coming to my mind with you and and um, it's obviously a mission of Prime Man and, and yeah. you believe in inspiring people and, and helping them bring their best. And what I think is kind of interesting is, um, you had to get through that, mm-hmm. right? And, and then through the faith of some good people around you, you know, you mentioned your friends, they kind of spoke that over you and called that out of you and here you are helping other people do it. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I mean, yeah, that made for more thing is definitely like a heart piece of it. Prime Man's like, Prime Man's definitely a heart thing for me too though. I don't know why I like love Prime Man. Yeah. And I'm like, he's just, he's my man, you know, he's our yeah. brand now. And even when we first started Prime Man, we weren't going to call it Prime Man at first. And even submitted a thing um, for a different name yeah. and felt like, what were we thinking? We got to change it. And I called and I was like, listen, we submitted an LLC under this name. We want it to be a different name. And I'm on the phone with the lady and she goes, I don't know. You might have to do this and this and this. And let me see if it's gone through yet. Because it was like the week we'd done it. Yeah. And she goes, actually, it's on my desk. So if you do it right now, I'll change it right now. What? And I was, I was actually, Kenja had a doctor's appointment. And I was in the car on the phone at this doctor's appointment. And I was just talking to her. And she's like, um, what do you want it to be? And I was like, Prime Man Press. And she goes, what? Like the bridge and twin? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and she's like, that's cool. What is it? And then she asked me all these questions. And it was kind of a fun thing because she like knew what it was. And she's yeah. not in twin. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of fun how it all pans out. So. Yeah, full circle. I love it. Yeah. Um, one of the questions we always ask our people is what makes you a ruckus maker? 
What makes us a ruckus maker? Can you read your definition of that? Is that okay right now? Can yeah, I, sure. Can I hear I'll, it again? Yeah. Uh, you know, one thing that we're doing is we're bringing people on with missions, mm -hmm. right? And, and people that make a ruckus go against the grain, and mm -hmm. they don't do what culture would normally say is normal. Mm -hmm. And one thing for your business that I would define as not normal is you have a, you have a mission behind what you do. Like, it's not about selling T-shirts. It has nothing to do with selling T-shirts. Yeah. And, and so when I look at that, I see you. The reason why we asked you to be here is because you you, you're going against the grain. It's different, mm -hmm. right? Because we can think of 100 T-shirt companies, mm -hmm. but there's a reason why Prime Man Press feels different when you walk in the store. Oh, that's cool, man. Well, I love your encouragement in that. I think, um, I don't, you know, what makes us that way? I mean, I, I really do, like, I think, like, God is for people. And maybe our, our definitions of, like, what we believe in in life and different things of, like, they get mixed up or messy and stuff. And, and I think God really put on our hearts, like, be, be a light and be different in that. But I also... Um, I like my life was not perfect by any means, you know, and so like I have a, a heart for where people are sometimes, you know, and and I want to be there. Like even the other day, this little girl came into our store and and she was talking to me about drawing T-shirts and she's like, I like to draw, you know, and I was like, you know, my wife draws all these pictures and she was all excited about it. And her mom's like, see, you could keep drawing. You could do something like this with your life. And I was like, you should. And and we're chatting. And she goes, yeah, so sorry. Like, she she's recently lost, like, her a person in her life. And so this little girl, I, I don't know how old she was. I would guess she's 10. And, and I was like, who'd you lose in your life? And she goes, my dad. And I go, you know, my wife, she lost her dad when she was, like, 12. And that's part of the reason she drew all the time. And now look what she gets to do. And she's so kind and she dealt with things so well. And you grieve and, and how do you grieve well? Because it's a messy yeah. thing. But it was cool, this little girl. And I'm like, oh, I wish Kenj was here to share this story with this girl. And she just starts crying. And I get to hook her up with some stickers and some Prime Man stuff. And her mom was like, oh, my goodness, like, I haven't seen her cry yet. Like oh she lost goodness. her dad and this little girl hadn't even cried yet. And it's like, uh, holy cow, like we all have influence in life. Yeah. And You're to be able to share it. that story, yeah. like to this little girl and be like, and, and even point at my wall, like that's an easy way for me to be like, hey, I believe that about you. Like you're made for more. And for her to like cry in my store and me be like, oh, I'm so proud of you and keep hanging in there. Like, life is so much more than the hustle and bustle of selling tees. Like, I want you to, like, if you're going to buy a T-shirt, like, what's the reason to buy a T-shirt? Well, I want to wear it. It's like, okay, well, let's make stuff people want to wear. Let's not just make T-shirts. Right. Like, let's make something you want to wear that you enjoy wearing. Let's make a soft T-shirt that's cool. But, like, let's care about our people. Like, honestly, if you want to come have a free cup of coffee every day, like, I'm cool with that. Like, it doesn't, I'm, it's all good. Yeah. And so... I don't know, like, I don't know if I just got on too big of a, like, tangent, but, like, for the ruckus maker thing, I really believe that, like, everybody has a story, and everybody has purpose, and everybody can, like, press into that, or not. That's the crazy thing. Yeah. Like, I know we're in a good, we're in a season in culture when we're, like, lifting up some good things, but I also think we don't admit the fact that, like, I could also just be a bum, <laughs> like sure, like me, like I could just sit around, like yeah. And there's weird things in me that like almost could do that, and I like want to fight against. I want to like let's do something with our lives. Like I don't want to waste my life. Yeah, like we're living in, and I believe that like life is full, but life is good. Like I love where we're at in life, and. And so I want to encourage people, like, yeah, go go do it. Like, go have a full good life, you know. Yeah. Someday when I'm, like, you know, if I ever get to be, like, some old person sitting in a rocking chair with my best friend <laughs> and Kenj and I are sitting out there talking to Haley in our rocking chairs someday, I want to look back and be like, man, look at all that God did in our lives. I don't want to be like, I wish we would have. 
I like I want to look back and like cherish like yeah. the crazy like oh, we took this weird risk and we went to Alaska <laughs> like yeah. that was weird like what and we we're like that was such a cool season and then like oh we got to work at Lighthouse and like pour into people and I loved that season and I want to celebrate that season and I really did like I gave a year's notice which sounds weird to people but I was like no I care about this place like I want it leave well yeah and and. I really care about what I'm going to do too. And so it's like, how do I transition? Well, like, and, and I want to, I, I wouldn't have done all that without like, um, like people giving wisdom and, and people being a huge part of it. I even love being on your little show. Like how yeah, cool is you. this? You know, thank yeah, you so I, much. Uh, you're making a difference. Uh, thank you. really like, um, businesses and people that have missions deserve to be highlighted. And that's why we do this show is because, uh, people like you, Oh, we want to keep man. keep putting that message out there, right? It's better than the hate and dissension of, of other of other <laughs> messages. So yeah, we want we want to make you uh, make you famous. So. No, thanks, man. Awesome. Well, it's been a great show. I want to say thank you, Corey, for being here. Thank you for thank your you. time. Uh, you are making a difference, and we are so honored to have you on the show. Today. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed getting to know the mission behind Prime Man Press, stop by their store on Main Street in Twin Falls, or follow them on social to see all their great stuff. Remember that even the most simple businesses can have a huge impact. It's so much more than just selling a t-shirt for Prime Man. Your business was meant to make a difference. You were made for more. Life is short. Make a rise.